a wonderful morning to viewers across the world. It's Ayo Adams on the sports segment of the weekend show. It's been an exciting week and club football has returned after a break of international you know, representation across the teams. Nigeria also played in the international break across uh, multiple regions. We also had the um, common ball and the European qualifiers for the upcoming Euros that's going to be happening in Germany. All those happened. And now we're going to be walking you through some of the recent updates and headlines across the world of sports. And we're going to start with the African Football League, which kicked off yesterday, Friday, um, with Simba FC and Al Ali taking on themselves in a four goals thriller. Here is how the tournament began. It was formally announced by the Continental Football Governing Body. The commencement is set to signal the dawn of a new era for elite club football on the continent. CAF President Dr. Patrice Motepe presented the trophy in an event attended by the, CAF, by the CAF and FIFA football family on Friday. Inspired by the ever-changing movement of, of the ever-changing movement of nature, the AFL trophy is one that has walked and has narrated the journey and the growth of the prestigious competition. Eight teams are taking part in this 2023 African Football League. One team has been picked from each of the top trunk leagues on the continent, and the Premier Soccer League will be represented by none others than my Melody Sounddowns. That means that the PSL traditional giants Keze Chiefs and Orlando Pirates have missed out. Egyptian giant Al Ahly, um, Wydad Casablanca of Morocco, Esperance, T Esperance TP of Mazembe, Nigeria's Ayimba Football Club, Simba SC from Tanzania, and Petro Atletico from um, Angola are all going to be participating in this inaugural edition. Apart from the bargain right at stake, there's also a financial boost expected to come with the Super League. All the teams that have made into the competition has now a guaranteed $1 million um, for just participation. And the semifinalists will be rewarded with $1.7 million. The runners up will walk away with $3 million, while the winners will get a $4 million um, dollars compensation after the tournament. The selected teams will play in a knockout format consisting of a quarterfinal and semifinal, then the final. Each time we played over two-legged games, home and away, and the away goal rule applies in this competition. In the event of a draw after conclusion of the second leg, there will be no extra time in the quarterfinal or semifinal stages. The match will go straight to penalties. VAR will be available for every match in the African League. Just as stated as by CAF. The opening games were between um, Simba SC and Alali um, of Egypt, which ended in a four goals trailer uh, while the two teams shared two goals apiece. The game ended 2 2 for both teams. It was such an exciting, uh, uh, exciting and outing for both teams who, who played the inaugural game of the African Football League. If you can have the uh, visuals for the goals of the teams as they played their opening games, the game ended 2 2. It was such a brilliant game. You know, um, the, 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 the teams played a close, contested tie. Um, in a 2-2 draw. What a brilliant game. You can see the header struck in there from Simba SC before uh, Ali, you know, pulled one back in the closing minutes of the game. Um, both games were both games will now both games were played yesterday as the opening game. Other games will continue today amongst the remaining six teams. Um, Simba SC coach Roberto Oliveira commends his team's efforts and opponent's effort also um, after the game was happened. Let's take a look at what he had to say. Our capacity here, okay? Two, two, okay. But uh, uh, we play aggressive in second half with the ball. We play offensive. I'm very happy and satisfied about the, my players because we play very well in second half. It's not easy. And that was the coach of Simba SC, Coach Roberto Oliveira, commending his team and his opponents for how they started the tournament. Moving on, let's come back home. As the sports minister has taxed the Ministry of officials on development plans for, develop, for discovered talent, the Minister of Sports and Development, Senator John Owa, Owen Eno during the week, during the week has charged the heads of departments and administrators of the ministry to come up with strategic plans that would define the growth and path of talent in the just concluded national games in Asaba. The minister who chaired an interactive meeting with senior officials of the ministry alongside Alaji Ismail Abubakar, the PAMSEC of the ministry, stated that such strategic plans should be able to keep talented um, athletes under the radar of the ministry and also define a clear path for them to climb the top and various sports where they have exceeded. 
He said that it was important to sustain the interest of these talented athletes in their various sports since they could easily lose interest if no plan is put in place to harness their talents. The minister sued for the greater synergy amongst the different departments to achieve this objective. He stressed that it was important to show Nigerians the growth trajectory of these talented athletes before the next National Youth Games. If you are able to show what we have been able to do with these discovered talents before the National Youth Games, it will inspire confidence and buy in, and buy in by Nigerians and relevant stakeholders. It finished by saying it should not be business as usual. That was a sports um, minister and development minister charging administrators and um, head of departments of the ministry to create strategic, strategic plans to harness the environment and create a suitable landing um, for um, the talents were discovered at the just concluded National Youth Festival and Games. He urged the administrators and stakeholders in sports that they should now you know, put themselves in a position to discover, to create a terrain and a suitable environment for the discovered talent. Let's move away from that and move to a more pressing issue that has plagued the sporting world, which is doping and betting in sports. In a grand arena of sports where dreams are born and heroes are made, there, there exists a shadowy realm that threatens the very essence of competition and fair play. It's a realm where the spirit of the game is tarnished, where the pursuit of victory is marred by deceit, and where honest sweat of art leads is stained by the poison of doping and the temptation of betting. Doping, the, the insidious practice represents a betrayal of fundamental principles of sportsmanship. When athletes um, resort to artificial enhancement, they not only jeopardize their own health, but also rob their competitors of the level playing field. And there's also the pervasive influence of betting casting a dark cloud over the integrity of the sport. When athletes or officials succumb to a law of easy money, they compromise the very essence of the games we hold dear. In recent times, a surge of athletes have either been charged with allegations of betting or doping. Romanian female tennis star, former world number one and two times, um, two times Grand Slam champion Simona Halep um, received a lengthy ban earlier just a couple of months ago for, um, from the WTA tour in a controversial verdict after she was um, charged with usage of um, banned sometimes by the Tennis Integrity Unit. In a similar case in 2016, former world number one Maria Sharapova was also banned for uh, was also banned for using certain substances. Bless Nokagbare, Divine Odudu, Oduduru have also been penalized for doping violation by the Athletics Integrity Unit. In recent memory, 2018 World Cup um, star and former Manchester United player Paul Pogba has also been charged and he faces a minimum of four years on the sidelines after testing positive for tests testosterone. For Burton, earlier in the year, England and Brentford forward Ivan Tony was placed on an eight-month lengthy ban away from any sporting-related activities due to sports betting. And just a couple of days ago, um, rising Italian and Juve star Nicolo Fagioli, alongside his friends Newcastle Sandro Tonali and Aston Villa and Nicolo Zaniolo, were pulled out of the national team training during the international break after they were charged with betting allegations. Fagioli gambled over 1 million euros as he, report, as he reportedly connected his friends to betting agents. Fagioli faces up to seven to eight months ban after he had clearly um, come out to state his case and also stated that he never bet on games that Juventus played in. Um, while, Zaniolo, while Zaniolo and Tonali await their verdict, we'll wait to see how the um, sporting bodies would take, would take, what kind of action will be placed on these players. Um, Newcastle's coach, as Eddie Howe has come out to say, he's in full support um, of Sandro Tonali. We'll wait to see how the, um, the units or the verdict comes out for these young Italian players. For some people in the sporting sector, these bans and penalties are worth the crime while others hold more sympathy, calling for the need for more support rather than how these athletes have been ostracized. Um, you know, so far um, this year and a couple of years back ago, we've been seeing repeated attacks, repeated um, you know, actions by, by athletes, either is doping or betting. Earlier this year, um, England and Brentford forward, um, even Tony was given a lengthy ban and it's, it's due to return. His, his manager, um, his England manager, Gary Sade, came out to say that as opposed to ostracizing these players, it's better we show them support. Um, some other players have also been stated to be betting and gambling. And gambling is an addiction, but to the fan, to the viewers watching, what do you think? Go to our social media pages and let us know. Do you think um, that the governing bodies should clamor for more support for these players or these athletes, or are these penalties what the crime?
Uh, let's move quickly to the weekend fixtures as club football has returned over the club football has returned and we'll be moving to some of the fixtures go, that are going to be played over the weekend. Um, we're going to start from the Premier League where we're going to see Liverpool though in the Messi side derby in Liverpool will be hosting I am Everton um, by 12.30 p.m. Brentford are uh, hosting Burnley who are still yet you know to, to pick up the surge and the the the, the the activities and the style of play that they displayed in the championship, which brought, which brought them back to the Premier League. Manchester City will be hosting Brighton, Man City, who went um, on a roll of defeat after their my, my main man, Rodri, was given a match ban, was given a couple of match ban. We'll wait to see how that pans out for um, the defending champions. Um, the biggest match of the day is a, is a London derby between Chelsea and Arsenal, a big game between both teams. It's, it's been big games um, in the history of the sport. Um, Arsenal currently are one of the top teams in the world where Chelsea are still find, trying to find their feet. Well, we'll wait to see how that pans out for both teams. Um, Sheffield United will be hosting Manchester United. Let's see how the United um, team will, will show up after um, they, they were able to clinch a 2-1 victory before the international break. Those two, those two goals courtesy of Scott McTominay. On Monday, we'll have sports to be taken on Fulham. The table leaders will be taken on Fulham. Let's move to La Liga, where we have Real Sociedad who will be playing on Mallorca at 1 p.m. Getafe will hold Real Betis. Sevilla will be playing against Real Madrid. Can Jude Bellingham continue his surge in the La Liga? We'll wait to see how that pans out. Well, Atletico Madrid are traveling away to Celta Vigo. On Sunday, Villarreal will host Alaves, where Barcelona will be taking on Athletic Club. Finally, in Syria, we have Elas Verona will be playing against Napoli. Victor Osimhen has been rolled out for a couple of months, for a couple of weeks um, uh, after he sustained a little, a little bit of injury while on international break with Nigeria. Torino will be host Inter Milan. Sassuolo will be taking on Lazio. And on Sunday, AS Roma will play Monza. Atalanta will host Genoa. And AC Milan will be hosting Juventus in a blockbuster fixture. And finally, on the sports segment, we'll move to basketball as um, Andre Godala has now retired. After 19 seasons, Andre Godala, who is a four-time NBA champion with the Golden State Warriors, has announced his retirement nearly two decades after entering the league. The 2015 NBA final MVP on Friday morning stated that he's retiring from the sport. After 19 seasons, um, Godala averaged 11.3 11 point, 11 points, 4.9 rebounds, and 4.2 assists in 1,231 games. The 2012 All-Star starred um, said he turned down interest from Warriors and several other teams before deciding to retire. Tire. It's just the right time, Igudela said at 39, he told Anscape in a phone interview. Um, time started to get limited for me, and I didn't want to put anything in the back seat. I didn't want to try to delegate time anymore, especially with the court and off the court. Well, uh, the superstar has now retired after 19 seasons, after, you know, despite you know, uh, um, clubs and teams calling for him to continue playing. He said the time and the curtain is now drawn on his professional career. Well, that's where I leave you this week with all the spot roundups and headlines. My name is Ayo Adams, and I'm seeing you same time next week. The weekend show is still on. Stay tuned.